Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mandy Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and of course, University of Miami head coach Mandy Diaz. Hurricanes have made it three in a row now with a big win over Georgia Tech. And now it's our favorite week of the year. It is Florida State Week, which we'll get to in a moment. But, Coach, congratulations on a wild win against Georgia Tech. It was um, made a little harder than we needed to, um, but sometimes you got to find a way when um, you're not playing your best and some things go against you. And obviously, for a team that hadn't fumbled in six games or five games, to put it on the ground three times in one quarter is, uh, is quite a feat. you got to credit Georgia Tech for the way that they went after it. Um, and that gave them life in a game that we were you know, really in control of. And, and then once you're in that situation, you got to find a way to manage it and see it through. Uh, which I'm proud of our guys for doing. I mean, it's rare to win a football game when you turn it over that many times. And then, of course, you have some come back for points. Yeah. Well, they outscored us 16-0 to zero in points off turnovers. So we basically shipped them 16 points. Now, again, they earned that. That's not, you know, right. and, with, and, and we, we allowed that by not having great ball security. So it's not random completely. But, uh, yeah, you spotted someone 16. And that's going to make it very, very difficult. Then it made the task difficult. If you include a couple of fourth down stops, um, those were almost like turnovers. And, yeah, it, it, it was a difficult day um, by some of our mistakes and some of what they did. By the way, I don't know what it is about Georgia Tech, but I think we finally did maybe exercise some demons with them. You know, they've given the University of Miami trouble. Uh, 2004 or five, Miami's playing for a chance to go to the Orange Bowl game. And some guy, Calvin Johnson, might have heard of him, makes a couple of ridiculous catches. Uh, 2008, Miami had a chance to move on to the ACC championship maybe, and some guy named Dwyer ran for about a million yards, and uh, a couple of years ago they got a fake punt, and, and then this thing was trending the wrong way, but you guys showed a lot of mental toughness. Well, we knew it was going to be a tough game. Look, we, we had two really big energy expenders. You know, NC State at home was a huge game for us at Pitt, you know, with, what you, with everything going on there. Everyone knows what the next game is, you know, which it's now FSU week. And here you go, for, uh, Georgia Tech at home, early kick. We felt it was really important for us to start fast, um, to, to bring the energy. And we did. You know, you're up 14-0. to zero. And, then, and then we give up an explosive play on defense. Uh, then here come the turnovers. And now, now you're in a ball game, you know. So we, we allowed them into it. And then once we allowed them into it, we had to go 60 minutes to fight them um, to the death. Coach Rambo, seven catches, 210 yards, his fourth game, over 100 yards. And with a month left to go, he looks like he's just really hitting his stride. I think he is. Um, I think the comfort in our offense, you know, obviously he and Tyler have got a, a great connection. And, um, and he gives us something different. He, he can run by coverages, and he's doing it every week. Um, sometimes just man-to-man -man running by a guy. Sometimes, you know, Coach Lashley's got some really good setups, you know, where he can get behind a coverage like on a flea flicker for the big play. And he's getting down there and he's making the play. So um, he, I, I've said this before, but he is, as, is a big time year for wideouts in our conference. I and mean, he takes a back seat to nobody. Okay, let's get to Tyler Van Dyke. It's three weeks in a row. The numbers are off the charts. Ten touchdowns, one interception, over 1,000 yards, completing 72% of his passes. He's up to 310 yards per game. And that's uh, number 16 in the country. Scoring offense is up to number 32. Uh, obviously, he's handling it pretty well and going forward, uh, your expectations. And also, we've always said, if you're the quarterback at the University of Miami, it's a big responsibility. It is, and Tyler, just he, he approaches every game the same way, and approaches every drive the same way. Um, and we have to remember what we talked about a week ago. Georgia Tech is not a, un, a normal defense. I mean, they've got a lot of three safety looks, you know, sort of odd Robert dime packages, different things that they throw at you. And... Um, and Tyler just handles it, he manages. But what I was most proud of is that for the first time, it felt like in a few weeks, we, we, we started to stub our toe on offense. Not for Tyler per se, but we, you know, we started not having the success that we had. And now it really takes that steady hand to say, okay, hey guys, let's, you know, we're confident in who we are, we're confident in what we're doing, let's go back out there. And if you think about the first drive of the, of the third quarter, go right back out there, get a touchdown. And, and, and that really, was a big turning point, and we had to do some other things like that the rest of the way. Manny Jalen Knighton, over 160 yards. The, the thing that impressed me on 32 carries, I believe he only had four negative yards. And that, that's a feat in its own right. Forget the total number. Unfortunately, he had to fumble that led to points. But overall, a, a very good day for the Rooster. Yeah, I mean, he keeps showing he's got great ex acceleration through the hole. I think that's the thing that stands out. 
Um, he's learning to get more patient. When he's really patient, when he receives the ball and allows the blocks to form our offensive line, like you say, if it's only negative four um, negative uh, rush, rushing yards, it means we're going forward a lot. We're not get, we're gonna have to dodge guys in the backfield, which means we're getting the front blocked. Um, and he's able to see the holes, and once he sees them, that acceleration uh, is what's carrying him through on the second level. And then he's he's doing a great job of breaking tackles on the next level. He doesn't run out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we don't. We're not a big into running out of bounds here, in Miami. We we want to we want to fight for every extra yard, and and uh, and he's done a great job with that. Your defense, coach, uh, in the fourth quarter, I think it's the last four games. You're averaging about uh, you're allowing five points a game in the fourth quarter. Uh, your defense is making the big plays at the moment of truth. I don't care what sport you're in, football, basketball, baseball. There's going to come a time where it's the moment of truth. Bases loaded in baseball, can you get a double play? Can you make the shot in basketball? Football, can you get the stop? At the moment of truth, your team's making some plays. Yeah, and in, in the five league games we've played, the last two drives of the game, we've, we've only given up six points uh, on two field goals. So um, we are finishing games strong. I think it's a credit to David Feely and our conditioning, you know, that we can play hard for 60 minutes all the way to the end. Um, we had to play great on Saturday because we were in a tight game, and I think we gave up five yards of offense in the fourth quarter, six yards of offense in the fourth quarter. Um, and, we, and we had to be great because obviously it was a one score game and anything could have changed. So um, really proud of the way that we played. We're still, we're still hunting for that consistent performance. We, we, we still gift away, in my mind, too many points on some simple stuff. Uh, but that's, that's, we have to live with that. We have to own that. That's our inconsistency. We have to coach through that. We have to play through that. Um, but I know when I watch, I mean, we were, 43% three and outs, 45% three and outs um, on Saturday. I mean, I mean, those 33% is like a gold standard. 25% is excellent. Um, to three and out somebody over 40% of the time, I mean, that's dominating. So we, the players see enough to see the dominating side that's in it. We just have to know that, that those other things that are getting in our way are, are preventing us. And we, if we, we keep closing in and keep cornering in on the things that are, that are getting in our way from being truly dominant, um, we, we know the defense that we can be is, is out there in, in November. Man, you have a, almost a romper room <laughs> with your safeties. You've got James Williams and Avante came in. I want you to comment about his interception. And then Cam Kitchens was your leading tackler on the day. Those, those young guys act like they've been here for 20 years. It feels that way, but it, it is, um, it's an adventure. It, it, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> I think maybe the greatest thing they do is they make it look like it's easy, but it's not easy. And um, it's a hard position with what people are doing now with motions and adjustments and tempo and formations or whatever. Uh, forget about the playing because when the ball snap, you know, they do a lot of good things, not everything perfect, but when the ball snap, they are playing well. Um, it's the game before the ball snapped. That's as hard as anything. And for them to be able to manage their assignments, um, to be in the right spot and to, you know, keep the defense functioning. I mean, that, that's, that's really where it's at. And, and T Rob's done a great job of, of getting those guys ready to play and, and then obviously you get to see a play like what Avante made in the game, and that's, that's pretty special. Outside of, outside of that, Coach, are sometimes I think in sports the greatest players are the guys that transcend everything. And I'm saying it's too early for that for Avante and James. But nonetheless, I think together they played two and a half games. They have three interceptions. That's a, that's a pretty good start. And the, the interception by Avante was, I don't know, a cross between being an acrobat and a ballerina. That's it was right. incredible. Yeah. They can make a play, right? And we've seen Cam. Cam can make a play. Yeah. And um, that's what we were a little bit lacking this year on defense. I mean, obviously our turnover numbers are, are not what we're used to here at Miami. And, and so sometimes you need some guys that can make a play. But, but, but defense is about two things. Your ability to make a play, but you're also a defense to be solid and, and hard to beat. And, and I am proud of the plays that they make. I'm also proud of, of the stuff that's not noticed, where they're just making the routine plays where they're supposed to be. And, and, um, and they're only going to get better and better from there. One thing that comes on defense, also a sudden change, Coach, and you were faced with that quite a bit last week, but talk about the mindset on the sideline. You know, if you get a takeaway and then it's a giveaway, what do you talk to your defense about, about staying focused and having to come back onto the field when you think you're going over there for oxygen and water? Yeah, you, it, it disrupts the normal sequence of when you normally take a field. So we want to bring everyone together. Don't take the field one guy at a time. Let's talk about the situation. Where's the ball on the field? Um, a lot of teams like to take a shot right there, maybe get a trick play right. out of a sudden change. You remind them of that. But you also, the last thing you remember, hey, we get to go play defense right now. How cool is that? Like, we love to play defense. It's what we do, right? So, sure, could have put it or whatever, but we get to play right now. So where, where we're at right now, we get a chance to stop them. And, and a key sequence in the game, 
was early in the third, and Georgia Tech was up by four, I believe, three or four, and we go for it on fourth and one and don't get it. That's a sudden change situation. Defense went out there um, on a short field, held them to a missed field goal, and that was a key component of the game because offense gets the ball next time and, and scores. So that was a big t uh, big moment in the game, and, and proud of those guys for for um, standing up and saying, you know what, we're, we're good. We'll, 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 we got complimentary football. We keep talking about that. We got the offenses back. We'll go make it right. Can we talk about Keyshawn Smith for a moment? Because this, isn't he a great example of player development? Uh, you brought him in here, late, kind of late in the recruiting process, comes in. You guys worked him really hard in the spring, in the summer, really tried to tell him what he could be. And now you're starting to see it. And that touchdown on the goal line was great effort and great balance. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's uh, Rob Likens done a wonderful job with Keyshawn. Um, and it's easy to talk about Rambo and, and Harley. You can't forget about Harley. Harley's still making plays. That touchdown was unbelievable, right. and he's done that a bunch this year. And um, But as more attention gets paid to those guys, Keyshawn Smith's on the other side, and all of a sudden now he's got two back-to-back -back games with a touchdown. And I don't think that's going to stop. You know, and now what you, what you really want as, a, as, a, as an offense is, is that you can attack a defense from all areas. There's not a side where they can say, well, we're not really worried about that guy. We're not even talking about Mallory down the middle. Mallory made a fantastic catch on the third down, and then, then Jalen. So the fact that you can go um, really with all five eligible weapons and create a problem for the other side of the ball, I think is why Tyler has a success, because all he really has to do is just orchestrate it and get the ball to the open guy. Coach, you're, you're the perfect candidate to discuss short yardage, because you have a defensive mindset. You're the head coach. You know what the offense does. Most of the time, when it's successful, it's because of proper execution. And if it's not successful, it's because of improper execution. It's normally a half a step or a half a person or a half a play that disrupts the whole sequence of what goes on in short yardage. That's right. And, and obviously, we had three um, late in the game that we didn't um, succeed at. And so you come back and you unpack everything. You're going to look at the execution. Um, you're going to look at things like pad level. Um, you're going to look at you know, some schematic things. What were, what were we in? What were they in? Was, was there an extra guy? Um, you know, is the quarterback making the right read? Does he pull the ball? You know, because mm -hmm. they blitz the running back and there's no one left for the quarterback. He could pull it. Um, so all those things go in. And then you got to be intentional on how to fix it. That's, that's a real life thing. I mean, you can't just say, well, you know, we just do this better. No, no, let's be intentional and let's understand that if we're in that situation, our confidence should be there because we know that we've put the work in that if we're in a fourth and one and, and we want to be aggressive and go for it, that we feel really good about our chances to get it. Because we were really good on fourth down and one a year ago. Um, obviously, Derek is a different element with that, but we even were successful early in this season on fourth down. We will continue to push the envelope and go for fourth downs. And, um, but we got to make sure that we execute uh, that, that backs up the call. Okay, it's Florida State week. We'll talk about the Florida State Seminoles, the Canes and the Knowles at Doak Campbell Stadium. We will continue on the Manny Diaz Show right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Welcome back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. It is Florida State week, Canes and Knowles at 3.30 at Doe Campbell Stadium, which I want to jump into. But uh, I thought you said something really important to end our last segment, which was you're going to continue to push the envelope on fourth down, and that's really sending a message to your entire team about uh, your commitment to be on the edge here. And, and, you know, people like to say play to win, but more so of giving confidence to your team. Yeah, we are, we are going to play to win. Yeah. And we do want our team to feel that we trust them. Um, you know, we're, we're big into a lot of the analytics and, and what they suggest. And, you know, if you look at a, a, a game through a baseball context, you know, every time 
you punt the football, there, there are only so many innings. Our innings are our possessions. And every time you punt, you just end an inning. You choose to end an inning. And if you can convert a fourth down, you keep an opportunity to score. You can only score when you have the football. Um, and college teams last, or college teams over the last decade or whatnot usually convert fourth and one at about a 75% clip. You know, so that's why to, to go for 0 for 2, you know, we were, we were under the odds, right? So we have to make sure we're performing with the odds. And, we, and like, as I mentioned, we were excellent in those situations uh, before yesterday, and we have to get back at doing that. I like it. Coach, one thing about Miami, Florida State week, a lot of the time you don't have to worry about anybody being hyped up for the game or being excited for the game. But at the same time, probably your biggest challenge is to make sure you're not overflowing with excitement and that you understand that each day of the week, the better, prep, the better prepared team is going to win this ball game. It's not the team that goes out and loses their mind in the first series. Yeah, there will be a, both teams will be highly emotional. Um, this game will mean a lot to Florida State. It will mean a lot to our players. Um, usually once that settles in, now it's going to come down to the execution. Um, and who can sustain their focus for longer through that time? There's going to be highs and lows. The lows for us are going to feel really low because their crowd is going to be really into it. And quite honestly, it, we're probably going to an atmosphere not similar to what we've been in for a while. We haven't really been in a, a road atmosphere similar to what you get up at Doak Campbell Stadium. So um, it'll be an experience for Tyler. I mean, Pitt was pretty good. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were pretty rowdy up at Pitt. This will be different, you know, and, and um, our guys got to hold their nerve and we got to be ready to play the next play. It's their last home game and they've shown a pretty good taste for battle this year. They've been playing with pretty good effort. So I would imagine you are going to get their best effort of the year. We expect that. And be, be, be quite honest, we would expect that anytime we play Miami, Florida State, and they should expect the same from us. You know, and I, I think our kids will, will, will really bring it. Uh, we have a lot of pride um, in our performance when we play Florida State. Um, and look, we've played five games in the ACC. Five have been 60-minute <laughs> battles. It'd be crazy to suspect that this will be anything different. Um, and so it's not about, as you mentioned, you know, we always want to hit first. I mean, that's kind of one of, one of our, you know, battle cries. I think we've started fast over the last three games, and that matters. Um, but it's 15 rounds, and, and you got to be as strong in round 15 as you were in round one. Coach, they did a good job in the portal themselves this offseason. They've almost reinvented their defense, uh, increased some size. They've got uh, number 11 on the outside. Uh, Johnson Kidd, I believe, is his last name. But they're, they, have, they have upped the talent level and are playing quite well on that side. They are, and they've gotten better as the year's going on. They, um, you, you mentioned it. I mean, they're not in the same defense we played a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I mean, a couple of guys up front, Kier Thomas is another one. They're highly disruptive up front now, T TFL sack numbers. Um, they're going to challenge everything in their secondary. You know, and they've got a couple of transfers in the secondary that are playing for them. So I think their confidence has grown. As, as they play, and it's funny, you know, we, we've played now, it seems like three or four teams in our league who have either beaten Clemson or played Clemson really tough, you know, and they had Clemson really up against the ropes in Death Valley a few weeks ago. So, you know, everyone we play is taking confidence on how they've played against Clemson. Um, and I think they're no different with that. Uh, they didn't have their quarterback against NC State, you know, and he'll be back for this game. So we'll, we'll get the best version of FSU on Saturday. And I'll bring my nitroglycerin. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, right, this, this uh, was a great rivalry. It always seemed to come down to who could run the ball for a few more yards. And usually the rushing numbers were like 199. You were fighting for every, every inch. And now we're in the spread era, but you look at this game, what they seem to do best is run the ball. So I would imagine running, who, who wins that running battle becomes a big key in this game. It always is, and, and, and they're – they are running the ball really well, and, and when Travis plays, which he will this game, you know he gives them another element. And a lot of his runs are that go in the stat sheet. It might be third and ten. They call the drop back pass, and no one's open. He runs for twelve. Right. You know, so um, his legs change them when he plays. Um, but, but there's no question that other than him, that their backs are the stars of their offense. You know, and, and they're really making it go. I think they've got three running back. They have three running backs that have a touchdown this year of over 75 yards or something crazy like that. So they, they can create explosion uh, with their backs. So it, it is going to be a nonstop, don't get tired of, of fitting up the run type day. 
Coach, everybody wants to talk the offense and defense, Miami, Florida State, but it always seems for many years, Joe, you've yeah, lived through these teams. more than all of us, the special teams is, is the one that can really make or break it, whether it's a return, a missed field goal, a made, a made field goal. It's just a big part of, t- of the game as well. Yeah, normally in a game like this, there's going to be five or six plays that are going, that are going to determine it. Um, it could be turnovers. Certainly it could be a game in specials, a, t- a play in specials, you know, whether it could be a long return, um, a made, made kick, a missed kick, uh, whatever it is. So um, obviously we're confident in the guys that we have, but we're going to have to really be on point because it's going to be one of those afternoons where everything's going to matter. How about where your team is emotionally? We're late in the season. We go out to practice every now and then here you know, on Tuesday and Wednesday. You look at your team, and it looks like they're playing with a lot of joy in practice, like they really enjoy playing football no matter the circumstances. I, I, we had a couple of coaches when we walked off the field this past week that came up and, and made that same observation. We, we have a team right now that enjoys practicing. Um, some of that is, is that youthful, just, you know, feelings that we have to the team, whatever it is, but, but our guys enjoy each other. Uh, they enjoy playing the game. They enjoy working. They enjoy the, the, the hard parts of practice. They're, they're, they're enjoying it. It's not, it's not been, um, sometimes when you get to November, it's a strain to get guys to want to continue to work and continue to practice and push through. And um, these guys go out there and they handle their business. So it, it, that makes it a lot of fun as a coach because now you can really just coach the, the, the details of football. You're not trying to motivate them and, and get them excited to want to go. So that's been fun. Something else I noticed, man, is they stand up for each other. I mean, these on both sides of the football, each position group. I mean, if, if somebody gets pushed, somebody's going to push back. Yeah, well, I think you saw it when um, <laughs> you saw the sidelines reaction to Avante's interception. I mean, yeah. the, the team, look, it's been a strange year. The team's gotten closer as the year's gone on, mm-hmm. right? Um, part of that, we just had attrition, but, but I, I think as the team's identity, I, you can make the same argument about Florida State's team. I, I would imagine the same thing's true there. But for us, for sure, the longer we've gone, I think the closer our guys have gotten, um, and that's helping us here down the stretch. Uh, Zach McLeod and DeAndre Johnson, you're kind of your bookends. I think in the last two games, Zach has three sacks and DeAndre has two. My numbers might be off by one or two, but nonetheless, their presence is being felt. Uh, maybe we can discuss a little bit how strong they are coming on and what kind of impact you need from them on Saturday. Yeah, they, they are getting better. And DeAndre, you know, earlier was just he was getting the pressures. You know, now he's getting he's getting the sacks. And Zach, same thing. I think Zach's just getting confidence of playing defensive end. Um, what they both have is they both got enough, you know, athleticism and twitch to to make it tough on tackles to to block them. DeAndre had a couple of great rushes in the game. Um, on Saturday, and we're going to need it because, like I mentioned, you know, Travis, they, is, he's a hard guy to put down, yeah. you know, so uh, putting pressure on the quarterback when they do decide to throw the ball is going to be paramount for us. Coach, I'll stay on the defensive line. Leonard Taylor is seven tackles for loss, which is a big number. I mean, he, he's, I think he's tied for first in that category <laughs> on your defense, and Chance Williams seems to always be around the football making some plays too, but both of those young guys are going to have a big opportunity Saturday. They are. They're both getting better. Um, and as you mentioned, LT does seem to find his way in the backfield every now and then. He's, he's, he's just done a, gu- a good job of just going. Um, we, you know, we get in some of our movement mode type stuff. We felt like we'd have an advantage on Georgia Tech's offensive line. And, and um, um, those guys were making things happen. They made some big plays in the fourth quarter. Um, but as you know, anytime we can get someone behind the chains, I mean, that's going to get us into third and long, which we love on defense. Uh, uh, Waymon Seed's your leading tackler. I know Bubba was n- not playing, uh, but Steve's around the ball, like Don mentioned, the other guy's being around the ball. Is that because he's getting better now? He's healthy, he's been here for a, a long time. Is he seeing the game better? What, what, why is his game looks like it's being elevated here? It, it is. I think Waymon's just playing really well. Yes. Um, Waymon's a good player. He, uh, he's been through a lot. Um, you know, he's been in a battle with Keontre Smith, you know, back and forth. And, but when teams want to run the football, Wayman instinctively is as good of a guy as we've had here since Pickney, you know, at that will linebacker position. And, and that's not taking anything away from, from Contre. So Wayman was physical. I mean, he was in the right spot. Um, you know, like I, I, I mentioned the crazy stat, they ran for 135. They had four runs that totaled 136 yards. They had 28 runs that totaled minus one. <laughs> so the front, and when I, when I consider the front, you climb the linebackers. Now there may have been a couple of mistakes that let those ones out. Those are the where we got to get more consistent. Those other 28 plays, somebody's whipping somebody, and it's not it's not just one guy on the defensive line. That's counting the linebackers as well. So um, those guys are getting better, and I, I I am proud of Wayman for all he's endured. 
um, to, to persevere through. And right now, he's playing at a very good level for us, very high level for us. Coach, let's go back to the offense real quick. Restrepo and Harley, I want to talk about how they performed, especially the last couple of weeks. You look at Harley's numbers, and he's on pace to have a better year this year than last year. And Rambo's got all those catches, and other balls have been spread around. But the efficiency of the offense is really starting to pick up. It really is. And I'm, I'm proud of Mike Harley because, um, you know, this is his last year, and, and, and he's provided such leadership. And as an older guy, he's still been phenomenal. He's phenomenal when, when X is in there, he sees Rambo making his catches, but he's still contributing to our winning mm -hmm. every week, you know, and he's making his plays and, and, and it's just, you know, that's, he, he's, he's been what you want a senior to be. And, and, and again, he's still racking up his cat, catch count. I mean, he's got a chance to add some records here coming down the stretch and, and um, he'd be worthy of getting it if he got it. Uh, last question for you in this segment, uh, Miami, Florida State, you've been on both sides. Can you summarize what it means to you, and then what you're looking forward to the most going through this week into game time. I just love everything about it. I mean, this, this game is, it, it's a, it was a holiday for me growing up down here, and, and um, you always knew when the schedule came out, you just you went up and down the list and you looked to see where Florida State was, and when you're on that side, you do the same thing with Miami. You just do, and um, love everything about it. Love when we get up there, the, the trip where we stay, the bus ride to the stadium, you know what I mean? You just get out there, it's just a, you know, it's just a phenomenal environment, you know what I mean? And I, I think both programs have always had a lot of respect for one another because they both kind of emerged at the same time and both had to sort of live with the arrogance of the Gators, you know? And so I think there was sort of a shared uh, feeling in that. Um, it's been some unbelievable back and forth. It's been a streaky series, yep. right? And yep. uh, we got the streak going our way and it, it, it means a lot to us to protect it. 66th rendition of Miami and Florida State. On Saturday at 3.30, we'll continue on the Manny Diaz Show right after this. Sure are a lot of different drivers out there, and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The 10 and 2ers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. Auto Nation. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a UHealth provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. Experts treat athletes of all levels, elite pros, active adults, and youth athletes. Recover your game. Visit uhealthsportsmedicine.com. It's now time for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, I think you got something special for us today. Yeah, we're going to do something a little different than what we normally do on breakdown. Normally you're trying to show your best plays. This is not going to be a great play, but there's going to be something in this play that I think is worthy of, of you know, respect, adulation, and, and, and showing. So this is, this is the two-point conversion, right, that we're, we're trying to go up by seven. We're up by five right now. And Tyler's trying to make a play here at the end, trying to find Mallory, and it's intercepted. That would be a bad thing, a thing not worth not showing, right, on the coach's show. But to me, what's really impressive is going to be the effort of our players trying to get this guy on the ground. So I want you to look at, look at the effort of, of watch Ja'Kai Clark, That's our right. center, where he starts off from. Watch Jared Williams, an offensive lineman, where he starts off from. And you're going to see the guys running. I mean, just – Flat out, I mean, there's there's Jalen Knighton, or Jalen Knighton's trying to go right here. This is Rambo trying to lay out and get the guy. Now we can work on some of our some, some of our understanding of leverage, but look look at big Jared Williams on our catapult. He actually set a personal record for running. I think he almost got to 18 miles an hour. And I mean that that right there, that type of layout is special. Remember remember Jakai? And there's Tyler. Same thing, running, sprinting. Don, you know as an offensive lineman, that's not a hundred yard sprint. That is Jakai's at the at the four, but you gotta you gotta go it's all the way across the, you go all across the field, right? Yeah. I mean that and that is in a full born sprint. And when you see the, the, the way that these guys are are chasing the ball, the effort, and even though they got all the way in, just you're just proud of what these guys would do and how important it was to see them try to do whatever they could, could to not let the guy get 
in, into the end zone, you know? So, so Manny, I'm gonna unpack this a little bit. First of all, in all my life, I've never seen a team hustle that hard to stop that type of play, yeah. first and foremost. If, and then you look at, you take Ja'Kai, it's, it's literally a 145 yard sprint, and at the 40, he's as wide open as he can be. These guys are going on and on. The next statement I'd like to make is, if you don't think these kids are playing, then you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Well, watch Zion, watch Zion Nelson, and, and, and he's still in a trail, <laughs> and watch, he never breaks stride. He's still running, I mean, he's five yards running the guy. He still never breaks stride. Never. <laughs> all the way until the guy gets in the end zone. I mean, I, we've seen get players on defense right. that won't chase a guy all the way when it looks hopeless. And so for our guys to do that, like I said, it's, that's not a fun play to watch, but that's actually the effort that really is the core of our program. And I'll end it with this. If people don't think your strength and conditioning is working, watch that play yeah, right that there. Was, that was impressive. Now let's, let's watch some fun stuff. Okay. Um, but it actually kind of starts with a downer. So we got eight minutes left in the third quarter. And we just gave Georgia Tech the ball at the 45 yard line. We went for it on fourth and one, didn't get it. Um, and that's okay because we trust our defense. Uh, we know we can make stops. And I, this is a really fascinating stat. From this point on, uh, from this point on right here with eight minutes left in the third, they had 16 yards of offense. 16 yards of offense. The last five drives they had the football. That to me is playing championship level of defense. And that's where when we get our consistency figured out, that's the type of defense we want to be here. But it started on this play, because this was the first play that they came out of that drive, and it's a great rush. We talk about DeAndre Johnson right here. Watch DeAndre Johnson work a one-on-one, -on -one, gets back there. They're trying to set up a screen, and before, but by the time the quarterback gets a chance to get it out, he knocks the ball out. A turnover potential situation, we just, ah, the ball just bounces right back to that guy. We had some good guys in, in position to play the screen, had it got out of there. But a big, we call that PN10. That's a big time PN10 win for us right there. Later on the same drive, okay, same thing deal. They're gonna kind of throw the ball deep. We got Tyreek Stevenson coming on a blitz, on a corner blitz right here. Tyreek's got a great job of blitzing. And same thing, Avante Williams, here's Avante. And these are the plays you don't see because the quarterback wanted to throw the ball, but Avante's in good coverage position. And that's, a, that's how a good play gets made without making a play, right? He's where he ought to be. Now the quarterback's got to come off that look and watch the finish right here. Watch Tyreek Stevenson. Does a great job ripping and then ball. What I love about it, not just a sack, he's thinking ball. We're not getting the turners that we want, but we know if we continue to stay after it, like you saw DeAndre and like you saw Tyreek right here, that ball is going to come. They end up missing a field on this drive. Huge stop for our defense. And Manny, both of those plays, if Stevenson didn't get it, it didn't happen from the other side. The back side of that play was getting covered as well. You that's were a right. step yeah. away from the back side. Yeah, guys were where they were supposed to be, and that's the whole point. So we stop them there. Okay, now we get into the fourth quarter. Okay, same thing. Still a tight game. We're down, we're, we're down by one. Okay, and it, it's all about winning PN10. PN10 is the first drive of the game, first play of a drive. And just want to show you again some guys really doing a good job. Mari does a nice job. He's got a slow play the quarterback, and then he chases the running back. But watch from the end zone copy. Just watch the, the run defense. I'm sure Paul called a couple of guys. Watch Jafari Harvey physically dominate the tight end and completely smash him back in the backfield, which makes Wayman Steve's job very, very easy. And then Jafari is able to come off, make the tackle there with Wayman. You got guys like uh, Jordan Miller being physical inside with Hunt, Harrison Hunt stunning around him. So there's just, I mean, even right here, DeAndre again doing the dirty work, stunting in there. So there's, there's not a gap inside to run the football. And then you got Amari and Wayman off either edge, big time stop. That ends up being a three and out right there. Next time we're on the field, same thing right here. Now we're winning, okay? But this is after the crazy two point conversion play, right? So we gotta go out there and do it again. And same thing, they wanna run the ball and watch your guys inside here, Don. Bang. Go. Same, same type deal. Here's, here's the guy we talked about earlier, Chance Williams. Yep. Here's LT, got young guys in there. Got a little twist. Yep, same, same, yeah, same little twist. Ford knocks, but watch, watch what LT does. Comes around, is able to shed 70 off of him, stays square, and then John Ford powers into the center. And your 2D tackles plus Chance Williams off the backside, right where they want to be. That's a tackle for loss. You got a bunch of guys, watch, again, watch the exceptional play by Zach McLeod. What's he doing? He's hunting the football right there. So we're trying to get him out. The turnovers are going to come if we keep playing like this. 
And then again, so now we're really getting down to it, right? Now we get them in a third down to 15, 344 left. Okay, big thing, protecting the lead. They still haven't gotten a first down on this drive yet. And now we're going to come with a pressure. And again, on the coverage end, they're trying to run crossing routes, hoping for man coverage, but we're sitting there in zone. So we're just waiting all the guys to come. So we got everything collected here, but let's watch the pass rush. And we talked about this guy earlier in the show, Zach McLeod. I mean, this is really big time effort by Zach. The center's going to turn this way and want you to watch what Zach does here on the center. There he goes, right there. See, and that's the quickness, the, the one-on-one mismatch you want. And then he can turn the corner and finish. But the thing that also is great is that Chance Williams goes, does a great speed to power. Jade's got a great power rush right here. And see how we're just collapsing the pocket? So when the quarterback wants to escape, this is a mobile quarterback like this week, Keontre and James Williams are handling their gaps of responsibility. So there's really nowhere for that guy to go. But this move right here by Zach on that center, whoo! The other what, side, Coach, you got Zach going in there. They're a little bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. They're bigger, but they're not as agile. That's right. And, that, and, that's, and that's where the mismatch comes into play. And when you see us make a play like that on, on a third down, and now you get a bunch of guys finishing on the quarterback, great job. And that's, these, are, these are the stops. You know, they had, they had six yards of offense in the entire fourth quarter. Um, it's plays like this. And winning P and 10, getting into third and long, this was a recipe for success. Okay, Coach, that does it for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving in so rich, your superhero movers. Thanks, Road Warrior. So long, happy little blue car. No matter what you call your car. Goodbye, Speed Demon. Or why you're letting it go. AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you, drives us. Time now for the joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. And boy, oh boy, is this ever an adjustment. Maybe the adjustment of the year. Avante Williams goes over the top of a Georgia Tech wide receiver for his first interception as a Miami Hurricane. Avante Williams with a spectacular play changes the tenor of the game. Barichnikov, a mid-air acrobat. Avante Williams gets the turnover chain, and that is our joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. And welcome back to the Main Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and our sideline reporter and podcaster, Josh Darrow. Hello, gentlemen. All right, it's Good Miami and Florida State week. We all love this week uh, because of Miami and Florida State. We all have great stories about this, but the only one that played in this matchup is you. So let's uh, take it from your perspective first. Miami and Florida State, what does it mean to you? It means everything. I mean, this is, this is what the deal is all about, I think, every single year. Um, for many years, Miami played Florida and Florida State, and every former player who ever played the game, no matter how old they are, will give you their record of each of those games. And uh, Florida State game, since we're focusing on that one, if it was – me, uh, 40 years ago, or somebody 60 years ago, or somebody three years ago, they know what the record is. And uh, it's an important game. But the, the, the thing that gets me is that there is a mutual respect between Miami and Florida State. Those 60 minutes of football, everybody wants to uh, kill everybody's season and, and have the best game of their life and, and be a part of that history of that game. But when it's over, everybody respects themselves and they have that one common goal and that's to beat the University of Florida. <laughs> I love everything about it. The, the smoke, the chant, the, the great battles that Miami and Florida State have had from Jim Burt deflecting the ball in the goal line, the Orange Bowl, to- 10-9 game. 10-9 right? game, to Darrell Langham, 27 magical yards, to a little bit, uh, oh, a little bit to the right. <laughs> and what? And a little to bit to the left. left. So 
all of that stuff. And of course, it means bragging rights for 365 days. And then, you know, you mentioned Florida, how they figure into it. I'll never forget in 1991, wide right one, 12 o'clock game, beautiful day in Tallahassee. We're getting ready to go, number one against number two. And the great sports, former sports information director for the University, for Florida State University, Wayne Hogan, comes in and he says, Hey, boys, how about this? It's Miami and Florida State, one and two. And the Gators, they're playing Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for someone who did not play all 5'10 and 165 pounds of me that did not play in this series, this is, the, this is a remember when matchup. Oh, yeah. You know exactly where it's you were. It's a good were. way to look at it. That's, how, that's the only way I can do it, right? So you remember what games you attended growing up, especially if you're from the city as a fan, as a kid. You remember the games you were at for a broadcaster. You know all the moments. I remember sitting in the booth, I think, for wide. I think it was wide left, and Josie was very specific. We all had to help make sure we got the call <laughs> right because he didn't want to mess it up, uh, and he nailed it beautifully, as always. Um, I remember... I remember Don being on the field in 2000 and, and talking about how Cal, the laser focus of Ken Dorsey before they go on for the final drive, being on the field for Daryl Langham's touchdown catch in Tallahassee. And there's really nothing sweeter Ooh. than beating Florida State in Tallahassee. Yeah. And going back into that locker room and celebrating and taking that bus ride back to the airport and going home. So look, there is a the sport of college football has got distorted a little bit. We, we've had some of those conversations, but this is really what makes the sport so, it's what brings it together. It's why it's so different than everything else is because when you get matchups and rivalries and traditions like this, that you can count on every single year and what's makes the, what really makes the sport beautiful. So, well, go ahead. We had Frank Gore in overtime with a touchdown in the Orange Bowl. Uh, that was a, a huge Remember one. Remember Diedrich Epps? Was it a teacher? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, down there. That's the one that yeah, everyone remembers. Right, corner of the end zone. Uh, there have been so many uh, great Miami, uh, Florida State games and circumstances. Florida State came in here number one in '88. They had their 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 song for the season, and Miami beat them oh, 31. Yeah. They, didn't like, they, did, they didn't like that they didn't song. Like that. Deion oh, Sanders no, no, and the no, rap. No. Uh, Danny Cannell was intercepted a couple times in the Orange Bowl. James Stewart ran crazy, but this game now we have some new guys emerging. Tyler Van Dyke, he's going to be center stage. He's going to get the chop for the first time. And you know that all week long, Florida State's defensive coaches are trying to figure out how they're going to stop the big arm of Tyler Van Dyke. Oh, that, that, that's the challenge. And, but it's, it's going to be 60 minutes, and it's going to be a big day for Tyler Van Dyke. This will be, I think, really his toughest game as far as atmosphere goes. At North Carolina, it was a little subdued. It got a little tough, but he's been the hometown hometown guy a couple times. But he's going to go up there and he'll start uh, hearing that chop and hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. That's the great thing about it. It never stops, dude. Oh. It never stops. But I think for him, right, he's got to be energized. I think now that he has he like four or five you. games under his belt, he's so much better equipped to handle it. I think it should be fun, right? It should be fun for him. He said it. This is what you come to Miami. It is what you come to Miami for. You come to Miami to play in this game and for him to go up there and lead your team to another win. I think having North, Car uh, North Carolina and Pitt under his belt, is gonna, it's really going to boost him because he, it may not be exact, but I think it certainly will help. He can look back a couple years ago. Malik Rozier came out on the field at the moment of truth and he started waving to the crowd. He wanted to chant louder. That was pretty funny. He did back it up. Okay, uh, this game usually... No matter the circumstances, no matter the year, gets decided by who runs the ball. There's no doubt about that. And you go back from the beginning of time. Uh, I, I would say for Florida State, it was Coach Bowden's first year. And for Miami, it was uh, Coach Schnellenberger's first year, which uh, they, the first matchup between those two guys was 79. And you go back and you look at the number, and it's the rush yards. And it's never been for Miami. <laughs> It's never been easy. Now, Dalvin Cook for Florida State had some, some games here where he was very, very productive. But normally, it's the true game of inches. It's a two-yard game. You're taking two yards, two yards, two yards. You're happy with that. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out this week. I agree. I think the other thing, too, would be the turnover. Oh, yeah. right? You always remember those big plays. In a game where yards are hard to come by or points are hard to come by, you know, break the turnover chain out a few times. That'll be kind of nice. We talk about memories. Right, remember Sean Taylor's game there. The rain three, game. The three interceptions. He almost put himself in the Heisman conversation. I mean, that's one of the best defensive games 
you've seen from anybody on that stage. So if someone can, can break out the chain, uh, that would be special as well. And I think my, you know, Miami's run game has is, is really come along here mm -hmm. behind the, a, a continuous uh, group of five uh, with Jalen Knighton running behind him. Hurricane's young defense is getting better a little bit at a time. Now number six against the run in the ACC, 135 yards a game. We will continue on the show right after this. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. Thanks, Road Warrior. So long, happy little blue car. No matter what you call your car. Goodbye, Speed Demon. Or why you're letting it go. AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., Josh Darrow. It is Miami, Florida State Week. Hurricanes will be at Doak Campbell Stadium. Miami's won the last two times at Doak Campbell Stadium. Historically, Miami's played well at Doak Campbell. This year, Florida State is not playing so well at Doak. They're just 2-4 and four at home this year. What do we make of this Florida State team? I think that Norvell is getting the effort out of them but they're not getting all the results. Joe, they went out and made wholesale changes and went to the portal and tried to reinvent that defensive side of the football, and it's working. Uh, you're gonna see their number 11 is the, the Johnson guy who was, I believe, from Georgia. They brought him in. They've got a guy from Mississippi State. They brought in a Southeastern Conference infusion of talent, and it's paying off. Has it come together yet? No. They've had some issues at quarterback. They've gone back and forth between both of those guys. They've got the Milton kid from from uh, UCF who was had his name mentioned a couple times for the Heisman but this team is far better than last year's football team and you know we go back to how they played the season I go back to the beginning of the season or early in the season with how they played Notre Dame Notre Dame's done pretty good had a pretty good season they they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them almost had that and then of course they had the Jackson State deal which uh, took their season a little bit sideways but this is a very well coached football team and I expect it to be toe-to-toe -to -toe for 60 full minutes like everything has been the last five weeks. They also beat North Carolina this year, mm -hmm. so you know what they're, what, what they're capable of. I mean, the, the Johnson kid from, that they got in from Georgia is the real deal. And then Kier Thomas, who's from Miami, who came in from South Carolina, they, they got a bona fide you know, defensive line. Secondary probably needs a little bit of work. And I think the thing where Miami uh, has probably the advantages is offensively they've been all challenged this year, Florida mm -hmm. State. Their running game is led by their quarterback for the most part. But for them, throwing the ball down the field has been a bit of a struggle. So hopefully that will work in Miami's favor, or at least it gives them some clarity on where the matchups are when they take on this offense. Florida State uh, offense is 10th in the ACC in points, 28 points a game. They're 10th in the ACC. But what they do do well is run the football, 190 yards a game on the ground. Corbin has six touchdowns. He's very capable of breaking the big run. We expect Travis, the quarterback, to play and as Coach Diaz said earlier in his show, you gotta be able to surround this guy because he keeps plays alive. And certainly, I think against Carolina, he, he threw the ball 13 times against North Carolina. He was 11 for 13. He did the damage with his legs. He has two 100 yard games uh, running. The good news is, is it's very similar to what Miami faced last week against Georgia Tech. Sims is a quarterback who was a dual threat guy. Uh, matter of fact, he looked better when he was under pressure than when, yeah. he, than when he had time. And they had a pair of running backs that they had, one of them had a 70 plus yard run against Miami and they, got, they can do damage. At the end of the day, it's gonna be the turnover. Miami gives it away three times like they did against Georgia Tech it'll be hard to win the football game. And, and it's probably has never happened. It's probably never happened in that series that one team gives it away and they are the winner. So I think ball, ball protection is gonna be important as well. Yeah, I do like, I've seen, you know, we haven't gotten dialed in completely yet with Florida State, but just from watching them leading up to this, they have a, a, the stable of running backs is pretty good. Travis, Jordan Travis, the quarterback, I mean, he can, he's like a running back mm -hmm. playing quarterback. And 
he's also prone to the turnover. He's thrown uh, 10 interceptions on the season. So, you know, that, that works in our favor. He's had, I looked it up today, he's had four, or they've had four games where they've thrown for less than 200 yards, which is unreal. So, you know the weakness, you know the strength. Manny, know, uh, Manny and his staff certainly knows that. So that's how I think Miami's defensive game plan will, will take shape. They uh, have 25 sacks on defense. You mentioned the kid Johnson uh, got off to a great start. The last couple of games, teams have seemed to be able to have been able to keep him out of the backfield. But nonetheless, 25 sacks. Kier Thomas has been a real powerful player. You got Brownlee, who's from down here in the secondary. Robinson playing well for them in the secondary. Uh, Akeem Dent is a high recruit in the secondary, so very athletic in the back end. Well, and then also what they've done is they've upgraded that defensive tackle spot. And for his for history of that game. Florida State, Miami used to battle who had the best defensive tackle. And I think that's going to be the game within the game. How's Miami's defensive tackles going to hold up versus Florida State's? And Florida State's got some big guys in there. I mean, they got a pair of 300 pounders and they move pretty well. But it's, that's every, every position group is, is accepting the challenge. You know, is Miami's O-line going to be better or is Florida State's? And it just goes down. And that's the beauty of this rivalry. 100%. You know, they, their defense uh, was plagued by some, some things that we were used to hearing at the beginning of the season, missed tackles and giving up big plays. And they kind of rectified that a little bit, and then it kind of snuck up against NC State again and kind of bit them on the backside. So uh, they're a work in progress. But again, I think to Don's point with the, tur the turnovers, it, on our end, right, because of um, their inability to really move the ball down the field in the throwing game, you don't want to gift, the word was gift, like on the sideline against Georgia Tech, don't want to gift them any points. And, and I think if you can manage the turnovers uh, or win that margin and go alongside with the running game, and especially the way Miami's offense is playing, putting up points, that would work in our favor. Yeah, uh, Offense, uh, Miami, don't start a pep rally, make sure they uh, give Tyler Van Dyke plenty of protection. Miami's pass offense is now number four in the ACC, moving right up the charts at 310 yards per game. We'll have the keys to the game and more as we continue on the show right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. Sure are a lot of different drivers out there, and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The 10 and 2ers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. Auto Nation. The keys of the game are brought to you by Auto Nation. No matter how long you've had your car or why you're letting it go, Auto Nation will buy it. And you don't have to buy one from us. We'll give you a top dollar offer and check on the spot. You can deposit right away. Appraise your car today at AutoNation.com. And welcome back to the show. Joe Gacky, Don Bailey Jr. and Josh Darrow. Miami and Florida State Saturday at Doak Campbell Stadium. I That's can hear good. The, That's I good. can hear the chop right now. Yeah, and you can hear me stepping on you about 50 times during the broadcast. <laughs> I'm serious. When you're down there, I, 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 you feel like it enthusiasm. Like I get enthusiastic. I'm like, come on, let me hear it some more, some more. Bring it, bring it, bring it. We're good. Because it makes it that much sweeter when you walk off. He dreads this game working with me because I am just all over him the whole time. I, I, mean, I know I don't sit down. Some I games I bring a bungee cord yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to keep him in the booth. I apologize in advance. Keep him in the seat, a bungee cord. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the all important keys to the game and uh, the first key to the game for the University of Miami is going to be we talked about this a little bit but you got to win the ground battle right you got whether it's whether you run for five yards and they run for three it doesn't matter you got to win the ground battle Miami score points with your passing attack which means Tyler Van Dyke from the pocket touchdown passes you need touchdown passes score from distance and then Miami and Florida State it you you cannot have keys to the game without talking about special teams and a special rivalry. So let's talk about the ground battle number one. 
Uh, Miami's run game. We talked about Florida State running the football. The Miami run game over the last five weeks, they've been over 150 yards three times. Well, I think it's going to be important that you get Cody Brown and Thad Franklin involved in this because, unfortunately, the rooster, as tough as he is, I don't believe he's going to be hit as hard as he's been hit as he will against Florida State. That just comes with the territory. I don't care what the records are, but they're going to come at you as hard as they can. And you have a Georgia Tech game where Miami lost the football on strips. They actively went after the football. So you better make sure that you hold on to it in this running game and it doesn't get taken away from you, Josh. And here's, I have one piece of advice for our quarterback. Perfect the slide. <laughs> get down now get down let's go over to mark lake see and spend, and spend some time with gino yeah. all right points in the passing game he's been really good at yes, this he has. been uh, we've had the long drives but he has been able to connect with harley with rambo on the deep ball passes from 35 40 45 yards this game you need points from the pocket makes your life a lot easier and I say move that pocket a little bit. Find, locate where number 11 is and maybe roll away from him. Understand where the pressure is going to come from in this game and avoid getting hit. And you may have to throw some, some quicker routes. You may have to throw some, some passes that are a lot faster than you would like. But that time's going to come when that pocket is perfected and you're going to be able to unleash it. And I believe that TVD will let the long ball fly and Miami will come up with a couple. Well, I mean, the passing game has, you talked about Miami's, I think, offensive production. I think Taylor, Tyler Van Dyke, I was looking at today, he's 19th in the country in quarterback rating. From nowhere to top, inside the top From 20. not playing. From not playing to inside the top 20. And, a lot, and, and so much of that is on his plays down the field. And that's what he likes to do. You know, he likes to sit in the pocket and throw the ball down the field. And he's got the weapons to do it. We've seen it with Rambo. We've seen it with Restrepo. We've seen how Keyshawn Smith can run by a defense or make it tough, the effort that he showed against uh, Georgia Tech. And how about the, the, you know, no one talks about this or hasn't been mentioned, but Will Mallory made a catch in the mm -hmm. Georgia Tech game, took a hit, and to me that was like, okay. Stretched we're out. We're good. Man. We're back. And he is obviously helping the offense in terms of creating a, more space on the field for Van Dyke to operate with. So I, you really got to like what Tyler Van Dyke has done. He's elevated the efficiency and the big playability of our offense. And I think that's also probably helped the running game. Uh, Van Dyke, by the way, in, inside the ACC has jumped in front of Sam Howell in passing yards per game. That's pretty good. All right, our final key, special teams. Now, Florida State special teams coordinator was the defensive coordinator at Nebraska. Last week, they ran a uh, onside kick to start the second half. But in this series, we all know what it's been like, whether it's been a wide right, a wide left, a botched field goal. Truth of it is, is that let's hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> That'd be the best part. Yes. So if Miami can have that type of day, but I just don't see it being that way. I think it's going to be 60 minutes. I think that special teams and, and, what, and field position is a big part of that. We, we're all caught up in maybe the field goal that needs to be made or one that we would need to have missed. But I think the big part is field position, and Lou's going to have to have a big day. How about something else? Um, how about Jacoby George? What he's done in the punt return. He's talking about field position. Mm -hmm. 15 yards, 18 yards, six, whatever that is. He's going to break one. I'm saying that that will help, right? We, we, we talk about kicking. State also has got a very good punt return. <laughs> we can talk about <laughs> kicking kick coverage. I'm, I'm talking, you know, our return game in the, in, with, with him, that they finally solidified that, has been huge. This uh, will wrap this up. This is an enormous game for the University of Miami. Uh, they've won here three in a row. They're over 500. They've got a chance. You don't want to put that periscope up and look too far down the road. Yeah, I'll put it up. But, put but it this up. is, put it up. This, you think you win this game, right? Obviously, Virginia Tech, that's another big rival. You can say it, game. Joe. You're just, we're broad, you got a broadcasting. Chance. You've got a chance to put yourself in a really good spot. And by the way, uh, the two teams in front of them, Pittsburgh and Virginia, don't have the easiest path to get to the championship game. Miami is breathing down their, rec their neck right now. I'm with you. I think it's, you're right. We're right on point. But it's going to be one play uh, at a time. No. You know what it is, Joe? Say it. Here's the deal. We're Wait, on, how are you talking like we're this? We're on our way. Why are you talking we're like this today? Our, it's that we're week. I can't like help it. Today. It's that <laughs> week. All right. It's uh, Miami and Florida State. The uh, 66th rendition 
of this big series. Miami leads it 35-30. Kings have won four in a row. Thank you for joining us. For Manny Diaz, Don Bailey Jr. and Josh Darrow, I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next week on the Manny Diaz Show.